this is the thermal gable and we are doing quadrature amplitude modulation quam in this lecture we're going to go over the basic definition of what quam is then we'll go on to how to modulate how to demodulate and then we'll study the case of phase and frequency mismatch and we'll conclude with listing the advantages and disadvantages of QAM or QAM. Now, what is quadrature amplitude modulation? Remember that in double sideband suppressed carrier, or even in AM, when we modulate the signal, it occupies double the bandwidth. And this is why you call them double sideband suppressed carrier and double sideband plus carrier. So the bandwidth of double that of the baseband signal. Now, of course, doubling the bandwidth means we are going to consume more bandwidth. So the question we pose, is it possible to send two signals over the same band, one modulated with a cosine and another one is, is modulated with sine? Interestingly enough, we will find out if we multiply one both by cosine or modulate one with cosine and the other one with sine, we will be able to recover the two signals separately, although they occupy the same bandwidth. The reason is that the cosine and sine are orthogonal, they are quadrature, they are 90 degree in phase to each other. So we'll see, we'll try to prove this. If we can get the signal back, then we call this uh, advantage because we are sending two signals at the same bandwidth. So the following circuit will help us to uh, to find out whether QAM is possible, whether quadrature amplitude modulation is possible or not. Although it looks very busy, by the end of the presentation, you will be able to draw everything here. So let's focus here. In the upper branch, so let's split the diagram first. What you see on the left side here is the transmitter side, is the modulator. And what we see here in the right hand side is the demodulator. And the reason I am put them to, I'm putting them together is to give you a full picture of what's going on. So the green branch and the blue branch, the green branch is for the first message, M1, and it gets modulated by the carrier cosine omega CT. The result is a multiplication M1 times cosine. In the lower branch, we have M2 multiplied by, now the carrier is going to be phase shifted by minus pi over 2, which makes the carrier sine. And then after the multiplication, we get M2 times sine omega CT. If we add them together, we get what we call the quadrature amplitude modulated signal. So in general, the QM signal is M1 times cosine plus M2 times sine. Now, remember here, we did not start with one branch. We have two branches and ended up with one branch. We are going to assume that the channel is ideal. So we're going from directly from the transmitter or the modulator to the demodulator. Let's see how we get we get uh, we get into two branches. Let's see whether we can recover the message separately or not. So in the other branch, I will take the entire QM signal, and I'm going to multiply by cosine. So multiplying by cosine, we get here m cosine squared plus m2 times sine times cosine using trigonometry. The m the cosine squared will be one half times uh, one plus cosine double the angle while the sine times cosine will be sine double the angle. So we have three terms. Now those terms are distinguished in terms of frequency. This is the baseband. This is shifted to 2 omega c. And this one is shifted to 2 omega c. What are we willing to get? Which one of these terms is what we want? In fact, what we want is M1, the first message. So using a low pass filter with bandwidth equal to b on radians per second, uh, it's 2 by times b. So you get M1 over 2. Remember that the scaling factor is not a problem. We can always scale by two. We can use an amplifier. In the lower branch, the same QOM signal is going to go to the lower branch, but we are going to demodulate with the proper language, which is the sine. So the carrier is now being shifted to sine by minus pi over two uh, degrees, or radians, radians, and which is equivalent to 90 degrees. So if you multiply, you get now, everything will be multiplied by sine. So you can have cosine sine and sine squared. Now we'll use the other trigonometric functions, cosine times sine is sine double the angle. Sine squared is one half minus m2 times cosine. Again, we have a baseband term. We have two terms which are uh, 
at high frequency so using a band a low pass filter will pick m2 so we have shown here that although we are sending two signals shifted to the same carrier frequency omega c but one with cosine another one with sine we were able to distinguish them and that's the beauty of the qam signal so the basic function of qam sending two signals one with mediated with, with cosine another with sine and we were able to recover them now we'll focus on the demodulation and the presence of phase and frequency mismatch we mean by phase and frequency mismatch is as you can see here that there is an error in finding the frequency and there is an error in the phase so we have we show the red part delta omega and we show the blue part as the mismatch here now at the transmitter side we have the same two things we have one branch m1 multiplied by cosine m2 multiplied by sine and the sum is our qam signal at the receiver side now if you multiply there is a factor of delta omega and plus theta so if you multiply by this term we get a much bigger term here then we use a tri we use trigonometric function cosine sum cosine difference cosine times sine and we come up with the following full expressions for different terms two of their two of those terms are baseband while one and, and the other two are around two omega c so after the low bass filter what remains is just the baseband terms so we got the following expression i will zoom in later on to to get these expressions similarly we'll do in the lower branch but we're going to multiply by sine and there is a frequency mismatch and phase mismatch this is going to be multiplied by the qm incoming signal and we'll get after the multiplication we get the following terms okay we're multiplying by sine so now we open the brackets sine times sine sine times cosine we use the trigonometric functions identities and we can expand this into four different terms again two terms are at baseband and two terms at high frequency at the output of the low bass filter what remains is the baseband terms the other terms will cancel out so the summary of this analysis we're saying if there is a phase and frequency mismatch both of them at the same time we got the following outcomes I was expecting it here in one I was expecting to get into here but we can see we're getting combination of these two we'll highlight this more in the next slide we could have started with only phase mismatch or frequency mismatch but doing the worst case will, uh, will allow us to simplify things later on so <clears throat> sorry these are the two terms at the output of the upper branch and the lower branch now let's see what if uh, we make theta equal to zero of course if we make theta and phi equal to zero both of them together okay then you get sine zero this term will cancel out this is going to be one and we get half m1 which is expected at, at no mismatch similarly for the lower branch if you make theta and delta fc equals to zero which means there is no mismatch then you get here cosine of zero which is one sine of zero which is zero so this term cancels out and what remains is again one half m2 and that's expected and this is kind of proof that our analysis is correct now let's take one at a time what if there is frequency mismatch error but there is uh, no phase error so we make the blue part which is theta equal to zero the two expressions will reduce to the following now we're going to consider the other case where the frequency mismatch is zero and there is phase mismatch in that case the two expressions look like this so those four expressions are coming from this general case one case is the case of frequency mismatch and this is the case of phase mismatch now if somebody asks which is worse to have frequency mismatch or phase mismatch assuming of course the amount of mismatch is, is comparable well uh, if you look at the received signal here you are going to get your signal scaled and there is a contribution there is interference from the other channel there is co-channel interference similarly here but here we have time varying interference because of the presence of t the message will be modulated at low frequency and also i will get a modulated version of the second signal which means the amplitude will be going up down up down however here 
what we get is just constant scale factor for the message of interest and constant scale factor times the other message so the it, it, we might assume that frequency mismatch is worse when it comes to frequency uh, or time dependence so this is time varying co-channel interference because of the presence of time in the second case there is no time there is co-channel co co interference but it's a constant value so because this is just assume the phase is just a constant value there is no time explicit there so in this slide we have summarized the two scenarios having frequency and or phase mismatch now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of QM advantage and disadvantage of QM the positive part the advantage we have bandwidth efficiency we can transmit two signals each of bandwidth B at a bandwidth of 2B uh, unfortunate, of course, we're going back to the coherent demodulation requirement, and we need exact phase and exact frequency. We have just seen what happens if you have frequency or phase mismatch. In fact, we, we are we are we're sending two signals, and the difference between them is the phase. One is cosine, one is sine. So we cannot tolerate having uh, error in, in the in the phase or frequency. Now, these are some information. Did you know that the cosine term is known as the in phase component? I component and the sign is termed the quadrature component they are out of phase by 90 degrees if you draw a circle okay we have the cosine term here and then we have the sine term here so they are they are quadrature components this is why we call them quadrature amplitude modulation QM is used in color TV for colors information it's something that has been implemented and just is just to give you an idea that what we study is something either was done or it's, it has some practical applications now we can conclude our 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 um, lecture with a, a MATLAB demo what I did I uh, created two I got two M, two wave file two sound file m1 and m2 one is the a cat meow and the other is birds so this is the sound the one at the top is the sound of the cat and this is the sound of the birds I'm calling this M1, M2, and then I implemented the received signal. Okay, I'm just plotting the received signal in the case of phase or frequency mismatch. So the first example here, this is the received signal in the two cases. This is for the case of 10 degrees phase difference and 10 hertz. If you substitute here and you plot the expression, I got the following. So you can see the cat, and there is uh, overlapping with that the bird, and there is some uh, frequency modulation here now we can you can listen to the voice the voice is uh, available uh, I'm going to share the MATLAB files by the way uh, with you so you can you can look at the description and also here you can see that in the second example we're starting with the same two voices and you can tell how are we going to get this you can see the flip here that's when the sine become cosine and the cosine become sine and you can tell now that we got this for the case of error phase 90 degrees and there is no frequency mismatch so if you have a phase of 90 degrees you can see that m2 is going to show here and m1 is going to show here so they're going to the two signals are going to flip please enjoy enjoy running this video i will uh, share and not running this matlab demo i'm going to share the matlab and the sound files together thank you very much